Hi everyone, I'm Tom Wilson. Welcome back to the Northern Gamblers podcast. Uh, if you're listening on SoundCloud or on Apple, um, it's probably going to be the normal experience, but you might also be watching on YouTube. So you should be able to see me and James this week as well. And um, what we're going to cover this week is we'll talk a little bit about York and do a recap on that last week. And then we'll talk probably mostly about Beverly and Sandown um, for the week ahead. Uh, oh, James has already got a nice little beer. It's an Amstel. What, what are you drinking? Okay, I'm still there. How is it? It's lovely. I thought I'd go premium for the, the debut on uh, YouTube. So, yeah, nice yeah. Amstel beer. Very nice, yeah. Um, I'm I'm in Budapest. I'm in Hungary. I'm drinking Drea. There's one. There's two. Is that, a, is that a Hungarian speciality? Yeah, that's the local beer. Yeah, Drea. It's quite nice, actually. I think you should it. probably also point out that you're not actually in your hotel room. You're basically in a lobby. I'm in the hotel lobby. I'm in, like, the foyer of the hotel. <laughs> Like getting a lot of strange looks. Like, who's this guy? Who's this guy chatting to this other guy? Obviously, not about business. And who's this guy, like, stacked with three pints in front of him? <laughs> who's this on a conference call? Yeah, horrible. Mm. Um, but good, there's the power of YouTube. Now you get to see um, the beers that we drink while we talk nonsense about horses as well. Um, James, you normally just lie down on the bed when I'm speaking. So you well, be Yeah, I, I don't really listen to what you say. So I'm just on the bed having to lie down. But now I'm going to be paying attention. Mm. Good. Um, so York, we talked to a, like a couple of people about York. Um, I tell you one thing about York: don't ever get in a video with Tom Stanley. Jesus Christ, the guy's too good looking. He'll he'll make you. His, his hair put yours to shame, really. Oh it? my God, when your hair's going anywhere, you don't want to get in a video with Tom Stanley. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, that's a lesson learned for the future. Um, what was your highlight from York? of the entire festival but of course we were there on the friday yeah i mean uh, yeah highlight for us was obviously uh it was nice to venture into getting some interviews and speaking to some obviously we, uh, we talked to huey after you'd emailed him uh huey was great we spoke to i'd say tom stanley and chris dixon from racing tv and we also got an interview with probably what was the performance of the weekend uh, the week from Natash from charlie hills that mm. was great um mum's tipple was brilliant obviously massive winning margin the time seemed to back it up as well so it's going to be very interesting to see what he does mm. next time out and yeah and then you had the superstars in enable and shot who were just brilliant as always so yeah i think that's probably my four highlights mm, good just to talk about mum's tipple a little bit um mum's tipple is currently my second highest rated two-year-old uh, my highest rated two-year-old is earthlight then Mum's Tipple, and then Pinatubo. Well, just, um, just remind the, the viewers and the listeners, what was your highest rated two-year-old last season? Oh, at this point, it was probably <laughs> Marie's Diamond or so perfect. So, you yeah. know. Um, and the funny thing is that Aiden's got these weapons still to unleash. He's got this absolute weapon, Vatican City, that will come out. Um, and we quite like um, Coventry as well, don't we, for the derby? Mm, yeah, nicely bird. Yeah, it's the classic thing, isn't it? Like, I mean, these are obviously like class horses and group class horses, but there are still weapons to come out. Maybe keep your powder dry a little bit. Or... Yeah, definitely. I mean, in Andy Post markets, the, normally the, the two, better two year olds do tend to come out um, August, September time. Um, they run, obviously, they're running the racing, but what, what, what was the racing post trophy is now the. Uh, the virtual futurity obviously at Doncaster and yeah. um, so they're, they're normally saved it's normally the the early two-year-olds get caught out they're obviously they, they they were ready early in the season but then uh yeah they uh they sort of reach their peak and these better ones come out and progress yeah. further yeah mm. um my highlight was telling Tom Stanley the um winner of the e-ball despite the fact that um he shows my hair up nice to not tip it Mm -hmm. um and be minus one for the month so nice to have the 16 and one winner for the e-ball mentioned in an interview with tom stanley and then not to tip it what an idiot it's a good job you're decent the tipping isn't it it's it's not a bad job yeah yeah <laughs> good okay we will i think we'll start with beverly um we will start oh your boy um 
Charlie Johnson give you some oh. insight um, the other day. We were talking to Charlie Johnson about Dark Vision. Check it out on the YouTube <laughs> if you want to check it out. Is that, well, yeah, we'll do... new, is that a new thing to say? Check it out on the YouTube. Check it out on the YouTube. Many channels. Um, we'll, we will start doing like more um, content on the YouTube. So this podcast will now be like a video cast that will be on YouTube. Interviews. We've got the ledger. We've got media passes. Funnily enough, <laughs> I blagged it for the um for the ledger meeting. Um, we'll probably also do something like an opening show from the ledger meeting as well. Maybe. Don't know yeah, about that. Not sure about that yeah, one. yeah. You've got your lovely uh pace and oh yeah <laughs> analysis. Sixty-five views this week. I thought it more than that. Sure, I thought seventy-eight earlier. Uh, well, maybe. Um, <laughs> yeah, so more, more video, m- more rich content coming. Um, they obviously were a bit um, frustrated. You would, say, they're definitely frustrated with Dark Vision for obvious reasons. Um, he talked about forgiving the Goodwood Run. It was a bit rank on on Friday at York. Um, I'll throw it at you. So two or five at Beverly. It's the one mile two Silver Cup. Dark Vision is the the favourite at the moment. I think threes is the best you can get out there. But no, he's um, not. Really don't. He's, I don't think he's favourite, is he? Yeah, he's favourite. Yeah, is he? I thought. Um, I thought Desert Icon was. No, it's it's weird. It's a bit of a mess. Dark yeah. Vision's nine to four in places. Threes in places. Good birthdays. Five to two in places. Threes in places. Desert Icons. Five to two. Nine to four in places. Basically, there's three of them in a heap. Yeah. Um. So obviously they kind of liked him for York. Um, what's your? Are you going with Dark Vision? What's your perspective here? No, I'm not going to go with Dark Vision. Um, me neither. Me neither. I mean, you can totally put a line through the the run at Goodwood. He was drawn out in the car park and had no chance really. And um, as Charlie said, they put the blinkers on him. Straight, obviously, a massively valuable handicap. Mm. So they were trying to get that little bit of extra improvement out of him for that. But it went against him in the draw. But it was a little bit disappointing at York as well um, when backed from a ridiculous price overnight um, to fear. I think he went off. And mm. um, I don't think it was the, the greatest ride from James Doyle, but he was he was nowhere really. Um, the stepping back up in trip here uh, to 10 furlongs, obviously that was over eight. And the last time he ran over 10 furlongs, he did actually run pretty decent race. So... But I just, I just think he's sort of, he's he's just handicapped to the hilt now, and he has to put in a borderline group performance to win one of these handicaps, and he's just not, just doesn't look like he's going to do it at the moment. He's pretty exposed as well. We kind of know yeah. about him. Like he's ran yeah. seven times this season. Like mm. you're not sure there's that much more to unlock, really. No. I mean, he has obviously he's Mark Johnson horse, and they obviously do run a lot. Um, it will only be his second start at 10 furlongs though so he's mm-hmm. unproven at the trip and his run at Newmarket he was only a length and three quarters behind the winner walking the sand it was a good winner that day so I definitely wouldn't rule him out and, and he was actually he was actually ahead of good birthday that day and he had a one just a one pound swing in the weight so Looking at that form, you, you'd probably have to mm-hmm. have him ahead of Good Birthday, but I think I'm going to steer clear of both of them. Um, Me too. Yeah. Oh well, there's only there's only four of the horses to discuss, so we might have the same one. Um, I think a more solid horse for this race is probably Desert Icon. I agree. Um, yeah, he's. I, I'm going to take a punt on something else though. He, Oof. Yeah, Oof. yeah, yeah. He's also. Um, I remember we backed him actually when he won at um, Salisbury, um, but since then he's been he's been favourite twice and he hasn't been amazing. The run at Goodwood is a, a race that I'll come back to because there's actually a little bit of form that links the other horse that I like in this. But um, he was he was second to Waldstern last time out when yeah. you tipped Waldstern. Mm-hmm. Um, the third that day, Victory Chime has since come out and won. True, and he was, he um, was well clear. And, yeah, and he's since come out and won a class three handicap at Epsom easily enough by two lengths. He has, yeah. yeah. But, but he went up four pounds for that. Mm. Um, oh, there's someone. Someone, oh. <laughs> someone, someone just walked past. 
I hope people saw that. I might just keep it like this so you can kind yeah, of see. Yeah, 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 you should do. Um, but uh, if you if you look at the which one, the Goodwood race again. Now there's a horse in that race that was in. There's a horse in this race that was in that race. Three comets for Roger Varian. Now, um, my computer's going really slow, so it's really annoying. But three comets um, is by See the Moon, who is Ooh. a stallion I really like this year. And he wasn't actually that far behind that icon in that race. His icon was eighth, and um, for three comets was 11th. Um, he was about three lengths behind him. So, and now he's got a six pound swing in the in the uh, no, sorry. yeah three six, pound swing six no, three three comets is down to ninety two. Does it icons? Yeah, but he's off. He's five. off eight eight eleven. Does it icons off nine? No, the ratings. He was Desert Icons 92, three comments mm. 95. Now Desert Icons 95 and he's 92. All oh, right, sorry. Yeah, the Tom swing Tom. comparatively to that race. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah, the, yeah. the difference is three at the moment. Yeah. yeah, keep up, Tom. Keep up. This is this is why I'm 40 points up and you're minus one. That's true. <laughs> That's um, what happens when you've had three Hungarian beers lined up in front of you? <laughs> but um, that was three comments first race back after a gelding off. Um, and it was all he was coming off a bit of a break, so and I, I don't think he saw out the 12 furlongs that well. So they drop back, to, they drop back to 10 here. They'll be having a second run after gelding off, and they're also applying um first time blinkers. Um, and also for fans of expensive horses, he cost 525,000 pounds. So they obviously liked him in that way. So now I just mm. think the drop back in trip will suit the blinkers first time, sharpen him up. Second one after a gelding up. Mm. Um, he has some very good two-year-old form. He was giving weight to Man Manuela de Vega in a listed race at Pontefract, and he was only beating two and three quarter lengths. Um, he was given a four pounds that day, and and there was a ninety-nine rated horse behind him who was given two pounds too. So there's bits and pieces there if he sort of. Someone just fall past you again. Um, there's little, there's little bits and pieces in there, and you're getting compensated with quite a big price. I think he's 14's best price, and if he's come on again for that run, blinkers, drop and trip, second run after a gelding, there's enough in there to interest me. Um, but Desert Icon is is quite solid, but he is the favourite. Nice that 14 to one, three really? comments, good. Um, it's a, it's, I, a, it's annoying though because there's only six runners, you can't really go each way. I was um, less original. I, I thought Desert Icon was solid. Mm. Um, the second to Walls turn, as I've mentioned, Victory Charm coming out and one after. I also think the form of his um, Salisbury win on the 26th of June has been working out quite well. Pardon yeah. me. Too yeah. many beats. No, he definitely, he's definitely solid. He'll run his race. Right. Um, I... Yeah, thank you. Let me continue. Um, right. The Salisbury win, um, Kiefer was in behind, has gone up in the ratings. Um, I think it was 82 and it's gone up six or seven pounds since apparate was um behind has gone up in the ratings great example has gone up in the ratings and won um there's a load of form jersey wonder was the last in that race was eight and has gone up from 85 to i think 90 um as well so there's there's a load of form there i think desert icons rock solid i'm i'm surprised desert icons not the clear fab to be honest i think if you're taking one at the that end of the market i would probably Go with him. I mean, Victory Command is a uh, two out of three at the course for the place. Mm. It likes Beverly, and it's a it's a bit of a funky track. It is, yeah. It's a bit of a, a course and distance track. But yeah. um, he's he's been going for trip, and he was winning over eight furlongs. I'm just not sure. I'm not sure what his best. It would take a a career best as well from him. Yeah. Um, so. Okay, good. So, um, two comments, a um, bit of a, a creative one for three you. Comments. And three comments. Three Oh, even better. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, <laughs> does that I come from me? Um, 214 out from me. No, right I'm not go, go to the bullet. Absolute ratty race, that. Yeah, this um, thing the cards is trash, really. Apart yeah. from the two races we're, just, we are talking about. So, um, so if people watch my, um, Pace profile earlier in the week. Um, I talked about the Beverly Bullet and draw and pace bias. 
Um, I think, what do you say? I thought 63 or something. You said 78, 78. people watched it. Great. So there you go. 70 pe- so 78 people had the knowledge and the gold when the draw came out and were able to smash up some horses anti-post. Um, if you didn't listen, listen next week because there's another one coming. And watch as well, be on YouTube. Um, draw is massive. Quarter one has a massive um, advantage. 23% uh, win strike ratio and 46% play strike ratio. Just to put that into context, the win strike ratio, that is three times better than quarter two, which is the next best stall segment. And it's 12 times better than quarter three and quarter four. It's very, very hard to, to win from. There's basically a massive draw bias for um, quarter one. And m- most people know, but there's also a significant pace bias at Beverly as well. You want to be making all or you want to be prominent um, in your runs. Um, 2018, the first horse made all. 2017, the, second, uh, the first horse made all. Both would take cover. 2016, first was prominent. Second was prominent. 15 was a bit funky. Um, Spencer did a job on a hold-up horse. One, second was prominent. 2014, the winner was um, making all as well. <clears throat> so just focus on that. I was keen on Ornate anyway before the draw, and I was hoping you'd get a decent draw. Ornate's drawn in four. There are two that really appeal for me here. It's Ornate and it's Intense Romance. I think Ornate's tailor-made for the Beverly Bullet. I'm going to have a decent bet on him, um, and I'm going to have a saver on Intense Romance. But I really think the way he's been pinging out in these group races, trying to take on Batash and things, um, I think absolute tailor-made for low draw, pace bias, Beverly Bullet, Phil Dennis, ping in. I'm pretty keen. Um, who do you like for the Beverly Bullet? Um... It's difficult because we're not sure what the ground's going to be at the moment, and it's on. It's soft, good to soft at the moment, and it, there's no more rain forecast. But I'm not sure how quickly it's going to dry out. A lot of these, a lot of these, don't really haven't really performed on soft to an extent. Mm. Um, going off your sort of draw analysis and pace analysis, I, I can definitely, definitely see the um, the angle for ornate and. I'd probably, if push came to shove, I'd probably follow you in behind. You've obviously got a, a couple of dangers in Judicial and Tis Marvellous, who are also mm. drawn law. Um, I w- potentially would have been interested in the likes of Danzino and Cop Knight, but what the hell was that? That was like the bar. Someone was tipping like the beers yeah. back in the bar. Danzino can't break. Danzino yeah. cannot win it. It's impossible for him to win at Beverly. Cannot break from the yeah. start. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, for for any of them, I'd like the gra- ground to dry up more. It's not really it's not really a race that I'll be getting too involved with, to be honest. So, probably just swaying behind you with on it. Oof. I had, it, I had it between him and Tiz Marvis just on the basis that Tiz Marvis is probably better than these as a sprinter overall. He's just a better sprinter than them and has he's a good draw. But, crap. But he's not. He's better than all these. He's fucking crap. <laughs> Shut up. Um, so, yeah, I'll just start to sit on it. Lovely. Got out Elsa Beverly? No. Awful. No. Awful cat. The whole weekend's not that good, to be honest. It's a few decent races at Sandown, but oh, how dare you? A rough, rough weekend. How dare you? So I have people in Hull, people in Hull will be mortified. This is like the pride of their year from a racing perspective. Yeah, that is true. To be fair, but there's not much going on in Hull, is there? So, what's the pride of Middlesbrough's year? Where we're from, if you don't know, it's like probably the red cut two-year-old race. Mm, yeah. yeah this is probably better. Yeah. Um, we'll go to Sandown then. We will start with the 150 at Sandown. That is a class three handicap over five furlongs. Um, I like one here. Do you like anything here? Um, not a massive opinion. Um, probably won't be betting it myself, but uh, I, I, yeah, I did pick one out. Who's going Go on, then. Go on then. Um, Jemira Bridge. Oh, you fucker, that's mine as well. 
Oh, well, at least we're in the right ballpark then, eh? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it would actually require a career's best, um, which um, sometimes these sprinters, they reach a ceiling and they never really break that ceiling. Two but from then, two, course yes, and all right, then, uh, You asked me to go first, so you well, just pipe down. Just minus, get an opinion. You pipe down minus one. Fair. <laughs> So yeah, as you say, he's two from two um, over course and distance, and both they were both on decent ground. And the most recent win was actually on the fifth of July, and he beat Tinto, uh, and they were well clear of the rest. And he's actually got a bit of a weight swing with Tinto, um, so there's that's and Tinto, I think Tinto was forecast to be favourite. So no, not sure I understand that one. Don't know um, about that, right? Well, on on at the races, oh no, he's not. Oh, they've changed. It was, it was earlier. They've changed it. If that was the mm. one, didn't they? Um, so yeah, he's, he's two for two across the distance. Oshin Murphy booked for uh, for Robert Cowell. Um, first time tongue tie, yeah, decent draw. There's yeah, he's yeah, very yeah. solid, looks very solid to me. Yeah, it's um, um, first time tongue tie on Invincible Bridge progeny is a, is a massive plus as well. Who the hell is Invincible Bridge? In <laughs> Yes. <laughs> no more beers for you. No more he's, beers. He's he's an elite Hungarian sire. <laughs> uh, invincible spirit. Fifty stinkies through stud fee. Invincible spirit. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. Oh, that's, that, I mean, that's that makes that's a nice angle if he's got a tongue tie who goes well with the sire. Um. Yeah. 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 Maybe maybe he's more solid than I was giving it credit for. I him. think he's solid. You know, <laughs> first time. <laughs> First time tongue tie. Um, tongue tie. <laughs> tongue tie. tie. Tongue tie. Um, jockey upgrade with Oshin Murphy taking the ride. Questionable whether that is a jockey upgrade. Fucking crap. I think it is um, for Marco Gianni. I mean, no offense to Marco Gianni, but yeah. Um, not that Oshin Murphy's ever, ever but won on a horse that we've tipped. Not the waiter, but he is leading jockey, so he's still some. So maybe that's maybe more our fault than his fault. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. maybe I'm just picking the wrong horses he's on, to be fair. Yeah, maybe only wins on fives. Maybe. Um, and he's two from two at Sandown over course and distance. Yeah, I thought he was... Um... It's, it's, a, it's a track that you'd like to see a bit of a course form as well, so... Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's... Uh, Jumeirah Bridge. All Bet. agreed, then. Max Bet. I don't know what, don't know what Max Bet, but... <laughs> Max Bet, 0. 0.5 points. <laughs> um, 2.25... There's one um, I, I do like here, actually. And it's a horse that I was going to tip for Beverly. And then, so he was entered at Beverly and was also entered here and turns up here. Um, it's a horse called Country for um, William Haggis. It's the favourite. Um, goes for a four-timer. But I just think it's a horse that we really don't know the ceiling of. Like, phew, could be much more than the um, the current official rating of 93. Um, has been the last race was a race at Redka, that high class horse. It was a class three race. Country won it. You've got a horse in second, Cardano. That's the only horse that's been out since that horse won. And I think followed up. Been out now and won actually as well. Okay, yeah, I think so. Couldn't I? I think this isn't country ceiling ninety three. So I think that's a decent bet as well. Mm. It's actually really well bred that country. Um, Brigand, the dam, has got a lot of high-class progeny. Funnily enough, though, racing over much shorter distances, six and seven furlongs. So that is quite interesting. Obviously, he's got that Dubawi side, so that's brought out the stamina. Yeah, um, yeah he, I, I liked him in this as well. He's favourite. Um, David Manusia, everyone's favourite Twitter trainer. Um, Wankfest. He, he brings migration, and it's interesting because... Two years ago, two years ago, he bought Thundering Blue to this race, and last season he had History Writer, who's got a good mm. record. Didn't win, but it has a good record at Sandown. Nice. Thundering Blue did win, um, so yeah, he brings Migration, who won last time, last time out. He was heavily, heavily backed for the um, mm. for the Britannia. Um, he's, he's obviously a horse that the trainer thinks a lot of. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I had it between them two, but I mean, they are the first and second in the market so it's nothing yeah. original um so yeah yeah well either either or yeah i could um three o'clock is the atalanta stakes 
Um, Jubal also is the um, favourite for Sir Michael Stout. Um, he's got a decent record in the race. He's four from nine, um, 44% in the last 11 years. He won with Voracious in 2018, Integral in 2013, Dank in 2012, and Strawberry Daiquiri in um, 2009. Even more interesting, he's four from five, eighty percent, plus four point nine points when he has the favourite. So like he's just lethal when he has the favourite. Jubiloso is the fav here. Um by Sharmodal, who's having a, a a very good season as a sire. Um I th- Chiefly Park are also quite keen on the race, which is also an interesting angle. Voracious, even though a stout horse is a Chiefly Park owned horse, winning last year. They won it with Persuasive in 2016, Integral in 2016, um, and they send Exhort with um, Fahi, your mate, and Red Starlight with um, Richard Hannon. Um, I I think Jubiloso is pretty solid, but I'm, I'd be keen to take the horse on, to be honest with you, and I'd take the horse on with Red Starlight. Um, the and it's an early season performance, but the the Doncaster March performance for Red Starlight is a standout for me. Um, on speed figures, and with the um, the kind of the ownership angle and the Chiefly Park angle there, um, I'd be I'd be I'd be quite keen to take on Jubiloso. My second highest speed figure is um Solar Gold, uh, which is the Haggis horse, and Jubiloso comes out third. So I'd be keen to take on the Favorite Evens or or whatever the um, the horse is, um, and it would be with either Red Starlight or Solar Gold here. Um, do you think the Fav is solid, or are you looking elsewhere like me? Um, uh, I won't be betting it, but I, I think the, the favourite is pretty solid, to be honest. Um, Ryan Moore is getting pelters uh, once again for the run at Goodwood, um, leaving it too late. Probably should have won that. That that was probably a better race than this. Um, was was ran a really good race in Group One company uh, for State Royal Ascot. You've got to you've got to expect she'll have improved. If she's actually top rated in the race, and she's getting weight off the older horses, um, it's, it's just pretty pretty solid to me. I just it's well drawn as well. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, if you like shorties, I think it's quite solid. But I wouldn't personally be backing it. I'm just leave it. There's a better shorty coming later on. Don't worry about it. Okay, well, yeah, but I'd be so I think we'll we'll win. I I think solar gold and red starlight is solid each way bets. If you if you're desperate to have a bet in that race, I think they've got a winning chance, and I think they're a very very good place chance. I think you're getting fourteens and eighteens about them as well. I don't know. I don't know. You know. I really I really do. I'm keen there. I'm keen. Okay. <laughs> um. Next race is the Solario. Um, I mean, of course, there's been some blooming decent horses here in recent years. Two down hot won it last year. Yeah, Masada um, probably winner won it the year before. Yeah. Um, the market is headed by positive for Clive Cox. Adam Kirby takes the ride in the ownership of the Spence family. We have info. Do we have info? Um, I wouldn't say we have info. Obviously, we've had Mike Spence on the podcast before and he's actually coming back on for our St. Ledger podcast so looking forward uh, to that to get to low down on some of his horses and see what he thinks for that meeting he said positive's been working great and the, really looking forward to, to running him um, that run uh, at Goodwood last time out I mean it was only a second start obviously Pinatubo looks different gravy really i mean he looks he looks like a really really good um two-year-old and he had a lot more experience as well i mean he's won by five lengths so you know, i mean he's obviously a better horse but he had he said at least he had about four runs before that one well, definitely three anyway um and positive was five lengths behind but then he was five lengths ahead of lope fernandez um visionary was fourth again three and a half lengths back so they've put distance in between them uh platinum star was fifth he came out and won the two-year-old race at ripon um, which is normally a half decent contest. So that looks very decent form, and you've got to you've got to imagine he's going to take another step forward from that. Yeah. So well, the vintage stakes is it's a group two. A lot of these are coming out of sort of novice company. Mm. Um, he's already beaten Visionary. So if, I mean, it's it's hard to say with the two year olds because you never know 
what's going to take a big leap forward and just i mean some of these are really well bred but like uh, the al al sahel the godolphin uh apple the appleby horse that's uh, a full brother oh, no, sorry i think it's a half brother to telecaster um who won the dante this year um he was really impressive but again he didn't want to be it was just, i think it was just a, a maiden race mm. um so positive looks the most solid and uh Mike's Mike seems happy with him. So again, it's it's boring because he's probably favourite. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think he's solid. I think he's rock solid. Yeah, I like got him clear on figures. Yeah, this like, was won by Masai well, when he was favourite. This was won by Tuna yeah. when he was favourite. It's probably not a bad favourite race. Um, and he and he looks and he looks good. So yeah, yeah, I've got him well clear on figures. Like it's um. To give you a so I liked threat last week. I thought it was clear. It's a horse that had kind of disappointed a little bit, but then did well enough at York. Um positive, like on the speed figures looks looks pretty clear. And if positive takes the expected step forward that you would like to see, um then should handle this with with ease really. Actually, the, the thirteen to eight or whatever you can get is probably wildly fair, I would say. So yeah, I, I, positive. I like positive in that. Tom's little tip. <laughs> well, to be fair, I've just put up two very short prices, so what's that say? GLT, GLT. As long as you don't, no GLT. As long as you don't boom them, you'd be all right. <laughs> GLT. <laughs> uh, good. I think I'm done at Sandown. I think I'm done. I'm done at Sandown as well, yeah. I got anything else. You got anything anywhere else? Um, not really, no. There's uh, the Chester cards all right. Did I pick anything out? I remember looking at it. Um, no, there's, there's, uh, there was nothing else to stand out. It's, I think it's quite a poor, as I said earlier, I think it's a pretty poor cool weekend of racing, to be honest. It's a bit, a bit nah. It's a bit, a bit of a shame it's our first... Uh, YouTube podcast, but um, there's better there's better weekends to come. Mm. I'll tell you what then, and purely because I've got like another beer to go, and <laughs> so have I got another. Well, there we go. And it's a big one. Let's let's talk anti post for um. A, this is off the cuff, isn't it? I haven't even is, looked at this. This is very you, you know you know it you know what you like. Um. We'll do, like this is like a really off the cuff, rough anti post um, preview for twenty twenty. I'm even, I'm, I've even got to scroll back and find my messages here. <laughs> right, right now, twenty twenty anti post preview. Right then, let's just go for the best anti post bets. Well, well, we should, maybe we should talk about the Saint Ledger. Well, go on then. Talk about the Saint Ledger, and then we're going to talk about the Guineas and the Derby next year. Well, if people, obviously, <laughs> members of people follow the Twitter, everybody knows I've been back in Constantinople for about four months. So, yeah, it's pretty boring actually. Talk about twenty twenty. <laughs> there you go, it's Constantinople <laughs> the Ledger. <laughs> Cheek is on. Cheek is on. Is on. Logician doesn't even go so. Oh, nice. Lovely. What about Il Paradiso, the threat? The yak threat? Um, well, I just think people are getting way ahead of themselves because of that performance at York. We were there. Like, I don't even think Shadow Aries had a sweat on, did he? No. It didn't seem like it, didn't seem like it had a hard race. Um, I, think I would probably say the XP underperformed. He was getting about fifteen pounds. Mm. Like I wasn't really. It didn't make me think. Oh, I'll back him for the ledger. Put it that way. But people love to jump on a bandwagon when they've jumped from bandwagon to bandwagon done. So, I mean, logician looks looks like the real deal. To be fair, but I'm not, I'm still. I don't know. The extra two and a, two and a bit of longs is going to really suit him, right? Didn't look slow to me, and he wouldn't. He wouldn't. I know he won that race relatively easily, but Constantinople wasn't given a hard time either, and he mm. just needs to learn to race. Um, he, you know what I mean? That's he's just like 
a massive lumbering there's not a horse not a race horse he just doesn't know what he is at the moment but I suppose you've got a trust agent and sort that out i mean it's only two weeks so don't know apart from putting the headgear on i don't really know what else he can do but i think there's a lot of ability in there definitely yeah. um Aiden o'brien said he's he said constantinople's classier than his brother bondi beach who was second in a ledger so you know what i mean it's it's all there i think i don't think i'm not even sure if the dragon ale go once you get past that so imagine if the logician don't go we don't like il paradiso dragon it doesn't go then you're at constantinople mm-hmm. um so on priestley love the horse he's, he's been great for me this season um but i just think the step up to group one company might be a touch too much um technician not overly bothered about and then you're into like i doubt pink dogwood's going bookers constant was already beat um and then the rest i'm not really worried about so i mean if the logician didn't go i'd be getting a little bit excited about constant and awful because i've got plenty of money on it at big prices so yeah so we'll see we'll see what happens there mm. right anti-post 2020 um just give us your main perspective. So you tipped Annapurna, and that was actually later, wasn't it? That was in January or February for the Orcs at 40s. Was that right? Which one? Annapurna. Yeah, we. Um, I tipped up um, Annapurna to win the Orcs. It was 40s. I think, 40s. It, I think it was like 60 odd on the exchange. Um, I also I, mean, Ke- I also tipped up Starcatcher. I think she would have won it as well, to be fair. Definitely yeah, an angle for next year is the John Gosden Phillies. If he mm. gets a good one, I just think he's I think he's the best with them. Yeah, he is. Yeah. I mean it um Kevin Blake was still trumpeting about uh winter for about three years. So exactly, yeah. if you can still dine out on Annapurna for a, a long time yet. Um, Probably didn't dine out on it enough to be honest. Yeah, you didn't know. It was done within a week. Um <laughs> right. Who do I like? I have backed at the moment. I've backed Louisiana for the 2,000 guineas, um, a full brother to the Gurkha. Yeah. Um, basically, what I've done is, um, now I will, I'll do, I might do a video, I'll do a blog on it at some point. What I like to look at is kind of like um, the, the the race profile or the um, almost like the road to certain big feature target races like the roads to the Cheltenham Gold Cup or the road to the RSA or the the road to the um to the Guineas because what the trainers do is they send them generally to certain set races so for example what I've been digging into is the entries for the Beresford Stakes because Aidan O'Brien normally sends his better two-year-olds to the Beresford Stakes that normally have a good chance in the 2000 Guineas or the Derby um so this is where all this comes from. Louisiana for the 2000 full brother, the Gurkha. There's also this potential absolute machine that no one knows anything about, which is the full brother to Glen Eagles and also Happily. And that's Vatican City. And Vatican City hasn't had a run yet. So that's one of the, the, the reasons why I say there's there's probably an absolute weapon um, still to come out from the, um, the Ballydoyle camp. Um, so they're two from me in the 2000s. There's also a couple in the Derby, but is there anything that um, I've also Cormorant as well, um, or Cormorant? I've also um, backed each way for the 2040s. Um, I can't really remember why, apart from it's a Kingman. Um, it, the horses buy Kingman, and I just thought it was very interesting that it's a Tabor Smith and Magnier horse for, for O'Brien by Kingman. The dam's a decent dam as well. It's um, Shemia, um, who's had some some high-class horses. Um, well, no. She's had one. That's Cormorant. Yeah, I, I backed Cormorant as well. Who do you like for the 2000? Um, I'm not, well, I'm not sure about Pinatubo. Even though I was raving about him earlier as a two-year-old, um, they like the Armory, don't they? I like Armory as well. Um, went in a lot of the early season target races where the two thousand guinea ho- guineas horse would go. Has basically done the classic path and done well. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm just looking. You no, know, I know I, I um, messaged Sky Bet 
months ago asking for them to add horses to the market. I asked them to add Louisiana to the 2000 guineas market. And I asked them to add Heaven of Heavens and Lavellia to the 1000 guineas market and asked them to put Coventry in the Derby market. So those, those were the ones that I was obviously interested in. Um, this That Coventry is Galileo by Moonstone. Um, yeah, that's but, the uh, one. Yeah, yeah. It's the Derby one. Yeah, that's the Derby one. But her progeny is, has doesn't actually have a Derby winner, but US Army Ranger mm. was second, and then he was terrible, to be fair. And Nelson looked a good horse and then wasn't the best. But... I mean, it's very much mile and a half potential Derby prospect. Like the fact he hasn't been out yet, um, he wouldn't have to be that much better than them to to win the Derby potentially. Um, so yeah, he was interested. Need to look at this Lavellia again to see why I like that. Basically, I mean, I I've backed Coventry on the exchange to win the Derby at seventies. I don't know what the price is now. That's probably gone because I've probably taken it. I think you can uh, get sixes on just on normal. Bookies, I think it was on better 365, he was like 66. Yeah, yeah. Which is nice though. You can put a nice each way price. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We'll we'll go. You would imagine if the horse isn't absolutely well, I mean we haven't even that. seen it yet, so you don't know. You never know, do you? But you would you would presume with that pedigree that that's the, the end goal. This is the risk you take, obviously. You just you are basically betting on ped- pedigree alone. Um but that's why you're getting a price. But I mean, to be fair, like after the, after last year of betting anti post, and you just you get some. You think you get? I think I had two down hot for the derby at fifty to one, and like all over the winter, I was thinking this is. You know, I mean, this is we're not a sure thing, but this has got a really good chance. And then he ended up not obviously not going, and they messed him about. Mm. And he was seven furlong, and then he eight furlong horse, but on his yeah. pedigree. He looked like he would would get mile and a half, and he looked obviously. I mean, I mean, I backed him as he was crossing the line on his debut, so it was a bit speculative. But obviously, he was champion two year old, and he was he's class. Mm. Uh, oh, this Lavelle is um, full sister of Winter. Okay, I mean, which is, is isn't Frosty a full sister? Yeah, she's had a couple now that haven't obviously been on her level. Um, but it, that's 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 why I was looking at it, so. Mm. Good. So, real speculative <laughs> anti posts. Um, for me, Louisiana, Vatican City, 2000, um, Coventry for the Derby, but also you've mentioned that as well. Mm. Um, Order of Australia is interesting. We talked about that. Australia, um, um, the dam is Centre's Dream, which is the same dam as Iridessa. Um, but Iridessa, of course, is by Rule of the World, also a Derby winner. But you'd expect Australia to be better. Um, really interesting, but we're not sure we trust Centre Stream, do we? Well, she's not exactly a high class yeah. dam, so the chances of her having another group one winner, I would say, is quite slim. But I mean, you've got to give her another chance. Obviously, it's all the, the O'Brien, so it's all cool more. So they all own, own them, so it's not really a big. It's not a big risk for them, but um, so yeah. But I would be surprised if she was able to produce two good warning, one winning at animals. Yeah. Good. Anything else? Any other long term speculations? Not really. No, I mean, these, I mean, that is very speculative. I mean, I think it's hilarious that sort of Pinatubo's favorite for the derby. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it's like, you know, I'd be lucky, lucky to get further than one mile exactly. So, um, a lot of hype was around that Mogul, who's a full brother to Japan. Japan, yeah. Led you yeah. in next year. Mogul? Yeah. Nah, well, not if he's like Japan. We're going for the arc. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I think it's a bit too early to be getting involved. Um, you just gotta wait. You gotta wait till these. You gotta know these good horses when they're running. When when the good pedigree horse is running, and if they look like they're gonna win, just try and get on the the market as quick as you can. Um, but the the bookies are cracking down that a lot quicker these days, so it's quite difficult. Um, but yeah, Prick, pricks. <laughs> good. Um, all right then. 
thanks for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks for for watching. Hope you enjoyed the the beers, the the sights of the people in the hotel in Budapest. I don't know. <laughs> weird people just think I'm weird. You are quite not... weird. Yeah. But yeah, but, um, um, with the video content now, as um, the York stuff we did, we've got these media passes for Doncaster. So the places that we were trying to sneak into at York, and which which we did, which we did, um, but that was part of the which fun. which was which was the paddock, which was the owner and trainers. We got in the, old, the owners and trainers bar as well. Yeah. Um, that, but I mean that was that was part of the fun. But yeah, we've actually got some passes, so God knows where we'll get up to. Gonna, I'm gonna try hardest. See how many beers I've had. Try and get Aiden O'Brien. Yeah. And talk to him about Constantinople before he runs. So yeah. We'll, we'll ask him if he likes blogger. Don't know about that. Good. All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Good. Bye. Good luck for the weekend. Bye.